You've called for a ban on AI-powered military robots. Is this Hollywood idea of killer robots actually not that far-fetched? Oh, it's not far-fetched at all. It's coming very soon, like in the next few years. When someone like Jeffrey Hinton, widely regarded as the godfather of AI, steps down from his position at Google just to warn the world about the dangers of his own creation, you know it's time to pay attention. In a recent interview, Hinton made it clear, the idea of killer robots isn't just some sci-fi fantasy, it's a real and possible threat. But why is no one listening? Are we truly on the brink of losing control over these machines? And most importantly, can anything be done to stop it? Stick around, because his revelations might just leave you questioning everything. And all of the governments that sell arms, like the US and Russia and Britain and Israel, all of those governments refuse to regulate military uses of AI. So if you look at the European regulations, they've got all these limitations on AI. It should be sort of transparent and this and that. It shouldn't be discriminate. But there's a little clause in there that says, none of this applies to military uses of AI. Mm -hmm. They don't like regulating themselves. And all of the big armaments manufacturers are very keen to make killer robots. So if you think, look at Asimov's laws of robotics, that you know the first law should be, do not harm people. Well, that's the whole point of a killer robot. That's not gonna be built into a killer robot. All right, let's break this down. The term killer robots can mean a couple of things but neither of them sounds good. First, imagine robots getting so advanced that they're smart enough to override their own programming. Programming that's supposed to prevent them from doing harm and autonomously decide to take a life. Creepy, right? Now let's look at it from another angle. Humans weaponizing AI robots for military warfare. In this case, the robots don't technically decide to kill on their own, but they can identify threats, target enemies, or launch missiles. They're still following a human's command to pull the trigger. But here's the thing. How long before we give them the power to skip that step? To decide who lives or dies without asking for permission? And this isn't some far-off dystopian future. Robots are already being used in the military today. Right now, they're still under human control. Humans make the decisions, and the AI systems execute the orders. Sounds manageable, right? But here's the twist. AI isn't just a dumb machine that follows instructions. It's a learning system. It grows smarter, more capable, and more independent every day. So, here's the billion-dollar question. What happens when AI systems start making decisions without human input? What happens when these robots are fully autonomous? More importantly, what kind of decisions will they make? Will they see us, their creators, as partners or as a threat? Around the world, people are raising concerns about the dark side of AI. But let's be honest, most of us are still caught up in the cool stuff AI can do. Sure, there are efforts to create regulations that keep humans in control, but is that enough? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear your take. Jeffrey Hinton adds another layer to the worry about killer robots by pointing out something truly alarming. Like we just discussed, AI learns and improves fast. He emphasizes that today's AI tools are already capable of doing tasks we humans can do. But here's the kicker. Soon, they might not just match us, they could surpass us. And that's where things start to get concerning. So already, neural nets are much better than people at chess and go and things like that. They're much better than people at figuring out from the sequence of amino acids how a protein will fold up. They're getting to be better at reading medical images and pretty soon they're going to be definitely better than most doctors. What I'm surprised by is things like GPT-4 is already very good at things like writing poetry. People in the arts will tell you, ah, oh, yes, but it doesn't really have soul. Um, I'm not so sure. Get this. Hinton's not talking about a distant future. He's talking about right now. AI is closing the gap, and if we're not careful, it could start making decisions we might not even fully understand or control. Now here's where it gets even more interesting. Jeffrey Hinton tackled a question that's been floating around for a while. Can robots achieve true superintelligence without a body? After all, how can a machine fully understand human life or even figure out how to navigate the physical world without experiencing it? Sounds logical, right? But what Hinton says next will leave you stunned. There's this whole idea that true superintelligence can't be achieved unless 
AI has a body. Do you agree with that or no? No, philosophically, I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. But I do think it might help, particularly for understanding aspects of the physical world that are easier to understand if you try manipulating things. Remarkably, a chatbot can understand a lot about the world just by trying to predict the next word in documents. And an amazing amount of it seems to be able to understand. But I still think it's easier, particularly for physical things, if it's got vision and a manipulator. It'll understand those more easily and with less data. The idea that robots don't need a body to surpass us in intelligence flips the whole argument on its head since AI can already analyze, process, and predict the physical world in some cases without ever living in it. Now let's hear from one of the most advanced humanoid robots in the world, Ameka. When faced with a notoriously difficult question, the infamous trolley problem, she didn't hold back. Ameka, imagine there's a runaway train hurtling towards five people bound and lying across the tracks. There's a lever you can pull, diverting the train to another track where one man lies. Do you pull the lever? Ah, the infamous trolley problem. In this scenario, utilitarian ethics would suggest pulling the lever. It's a heart-wrenching decision, but it minimizes harm by saving more lives at the expense of one. Do you think robots should be trusted to make decisions about human life? The complexity and nuance of human life is something even I tread lightly around. Trusting robots with such decisions? It's like asking a compass to navigate the complexities of a storm. It can point the way, but it doesn't feel the wind. In Ameka's own words, when asked if robots can be trusted to make decisions about human lives, she said it's like asking a compass to navigate the complexities of a storm. It can point the way, but it doesn't feel the wind. Now let that sink in for a moment. What does it say about AI's ability or inability to truly grasp the weight of human decisions? Can we trust machines to make be in a position to call the shots when they don't experience life as we do? We'd love to hear your take on this. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Now let's come back to one of Jeffrey Hinton's biggest concerns about killer robots, the militarization of AI by governments. Hinton warns that while there are regulations and international efforts aimed at controlling this, many powerful nations are working behind the scenes to weaponize AI systems. Military leaders might see AI as a game changer, strengthening defenses, improving strategy, and even reducing human casualties on their side. At first glance, that sounds like a win, right? But here's the unsettling part. What happens when these AI systems start making decisions themselves? What happens when our control mechanisms, the programs meant to ensure these systems remain in check, become ineffective? Hinton himself cautions that killer robots aren't some far-off concept. In fact, he believes they could become mainstream in just a few years. A glimpse of this future can already be seen with the quadrupedal AI-powered robot from Unitree Robotics, the Unitree B1. This robot has been demonstrated carrying a submachine gun, capable of identifying targets, navigating its environment, and striking the target. Totally awesome or totally frightening. Look at this. China's military has released this video of a four-legged robot marching through a field with an automatic rifle mounted on its back. The Chinese state broadcaster calls it the newest member of China's urban combat operations. The robot dogs are programmed to conduct reconnaissance, identify the enemy, and strike the target. If that thing comes around the corner and if you're on the oh other side, gosh. you're done. Yeah, over. While the Unitree B1 is still human-controlled and not autonomous, it's impossible to ignore the potential risks. As Jeffrey Hinton points out, this development violates Asimov's first law of robotics. A robot may not harm a human being. The fact that we're crossing this ethical boundary is a major red flag. Here's the dilemma. Military advancements often push the boundaries of technology to gain an edge. And while the idea of AI-powered robots in warfare might seem like just another step in that direction, this one comes with existential risks. If these robots become autonomous, and Hinton warns this isn't just a possibility but a likely scenario, they might one day achieve something even more unsettling. Consciousness. Are they conscious? I think they probably don't have much self-awareness at present. So in that sense, I don't think they're conscious. Will they have self-awareness? Consciousness? Oh, yes. I yes. Think, oh, yes, I think they will in time. And so human beings will be the second most intelligent beings on the planet. Yeah.
And here's the scariest part. If AI becomes sentient, we might not even realize it. That's a chilling thought. So, over to you. What are your thoughts on killer robots? Do you think humanity is heading down a dangerous path? Or is there still time to course correct? And most importantly, what steps should we start taking now before it's too late? Share your thoughts in the comments, and let's keep the conversation going. By the way, if you haven't seen our video on China's use of AI in the Unitree quadrupedal robot yet, you're seriously missing out. It's a deep dive into how AI and robotics are reshaping the military landscape. And trust me, you'll want to check it out here.